Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the 2018 Hack Summit. We're joined here by the CEO of the Origin Protocol, Josh Frazier, who is going to be telling us all about building marketplaces and market networks uh, on the blockchain. And Josh, it's just a pleasure to have you here today. I know we only have about 30 minutes, so I just want to give you as much time as possible to dig in and teach everyone. So feel free to take it away. Thanks so much, Ed, and, and thank you for uh, inviting me to be a part of this event. I've been looking forward to this for you know, since you first told me about it. Uh, and it's really amazing to be a part of this global community of, of people all over the world and see so many people uh, participating, so many developers. Uh, it really is in line with what we're trying to build at Origin as well with uh, trying to have um, participants from, from all over the world. So let me switch to share my screen here. And, and audience, while Josh gets set up here, Please feel free to ask any questions that you have as he gives his presentation, and we'll address those at the end. And Josh, if there's any questions you want me to ask the audience in a poll, just let me know, and I'll type those in for you. And take awesome. it away. All right. So, so since the creation of the internet, digital marketplaces have been bringing together buyers and sellers in ways that were never before possible. It started in 1995 with the launch of Craigslist which took classifieds out of the newspaper and put them on the internet for the very first time. 95, took it one step further and said, the internet is this new technology that's bringing together uh, every human on the planet and connecting them with every other human on the planet. And it doesn't matter that you live in the same geography, now buyers and sellers have this digital town square where they can find each other and transact. And fast forward to today, and we have hundreds of these different types of digital marketplaces. And many of them are in this new category, which we call the sharing economy or gig economy. Companies like Uber or Airbnb, which take this idea of a digital marketplace one step further. And they say it doesn't even matter. You don't have to sell just atomic units of you know, some item, or you can also uh, sell fractional usage of, of different assets and services. And so the question we're asking ourselves every day at Origin, and the question I want you to think about today is this, what if, what if we could replace every one of these multi-million and multi-billion dollar companies with open source protocols, which aren't owned or controlled by anyone? What if we could create marketplaces which are governed by a set of open, and fair and transparent rules instead of the whims of these corporate rulers? What if we could create a protocol for a marketplace, something that's more akin to SMTP or any of these uh, protocols that we as developers are familiar with? And so we're dubbing this the sharing economy without intermediaries. And what I want to talk about first is just why this is so important and meaningful uh, for the world. So the first reason is, is pretty obvious and that's the chance to lower fees. You see, the digital marketplaces we have today, the Ubers and Airbnbs of the world, they take 20, 30, sometimes 40% out of every transaction. And they provide a lot of services for that fee, but what we've seen is that over time as these companies have become more and more like monopolies, instead of decreasing their fee, they've actually seized the opportunity to take a larger and larger cut. And when we're able to cut out that middleman, the fees go with it. And this is better for both the buyers and the sellers, where both people are getting a better deal. The seller is making a little bit more money, the buyer is able to save some money by cutting out that rent-seeking middleman. The second thing we can do is reduce censorship, and we can re reduce the impact of overzealous governments coming in and shutting down these services. We've seen this in cities all around the world with companies like Uber and Airbnb being shut down uh, and banned in cities all over the world. Even in our home city of San Francisco, uh, Airbnb has been regulated to a point uh, of almost being shut down. Uh, Uber is banned in London, in Vancouver, in the entire country of Argentina. In fact, it's, it's so extreme that the government has actually uh, partnered with ISPs to ban uh, the domain uber.com from loading on the phone and worked with the credit card companies uh, to prevent people from being able to purchase um, 
you know, service from Uber um, there. Obviously, if we can create a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace, which is built on cryptocurrency, we, we don't have to face that limitation. The, the third thing that, that really matters here uh, is the ability to redistribute the value to the people who are creating the most value in the network. So if you think about the first 100 drivers on Uber, the first 100 hosts on Airbnb, or really the first 100 participants in any digital marketplace, it, those companies wouldn't be here today without those early participants. But when Uber IPOs someday, how much of um, how much of those guys are going to be rewarded uh, for their part in making the company what it is today? You know, I had a ride the other day with a guy. He told me he was a 30th driver on Uber, and he's still driving for Uber today. And he's complaining because he's making less money today than when he first started. And when they IPO, he's not going to see a penny. And what blockchain does is it gives us a, a new revolutionary business model. It gives us a way to incentivize those early participants in the network and give them a stake in the network that we're creating. I'm personally really passionate about this, and that's how do we serve the unbanked or the underbanked people on our planet? We have about 2 billion people on this planet. Uh, we're supposedly unbanked. Um, and and therefore are shut out from using services like Uber and Airbnb and all these centralized marketplaces because they all have this pesky uh, expectation that you have a bank account uh, or a credit card to use. Um, Two billion people on this planet who don't have that, but most of them and a growing number of them have access to smartphones, cryptocurrency, and therefore have a chance to participate in these new peer-to-peer -peer marketplaces and for billions of people on this planet, the first digital marketplace they're ever going to use is going to be built on something like Origin. You can also think about it from a marketplace creator's perspective. If you wanted to create, say, a centralized alternative to Airbnb today, you would have to go city by city, country by country, setting up different banking relationships um, and following all of the local rules and regulations. If you create a new decentralized marketplace on something like Origin, you can be instantly global from day one. And that's obviously a non-trivial advantage uh, for anyone who wants to do that. There's, all, there's several other problems we should talk about around the existing marketplaces we have today that are, are siloed. We've seen the dangers of centralization in uh, recent times with Facebook getting a lot of flack for um, the way that they are using or abusing our data. And I think what we're seeing is uh, the, the downside of giving too much power to um, be centralized players. And it gives them a chance to capture too much of a value instead of you know, the participants in the network. The owners of Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg, has all the captures all the value, whereas we um, are the people who are um, just providing that um, value to him. Uh, and of course, we're, we know where this ends. It ends in a lack of innovation. And over time, more and more companies uh, become look more like Comcast or, or whatever the, the hated company in, in your country may be. Uh, and of course, we're, we're subject to arbitrary rule changes. Um, these centralized services can kick you off a platform anytime they choose. And we've seen uh, that they have a propensity to do that. And so what we're creating at, at Origin, you can think of it as, as three really big things that we're, we're creating. Uh, first, there are open source protocols. Uh, and these are the rules that govern the marketplace. Um, and these are enforced on the Ethereum blockchain. Uh, and are enforced by a set of smart contracts. And then on top of that, we're building developer tools. We realize that most developers um, don't know Solidity, uh, and Solidity is a, a very challenging language to work in, and, and certainly if you want to write uh, secure, um, secure code. And so what we're, we're developing are these developer tools that you can think of it a little bit like Stripe.js, and uh, most of you are probably familiar with that. 
as long as you know a little bit of JavaScript, you can get up and running and accept credit cards uh, in 10, 15 minutes. And you don't have to worry about all of the intricacies of the underlying um, you know, archaic financial system. In the same way, we're trying to create developer tools. So Origin.js, um, you can get up and running, create your own peer-to-peer -peer marketplace without having to understand all the ins and outs of uh, how the blockchain works or how um, the intricacies of the Ethereum network. And then the, the, the last thing we're building is a community. And, then, and this is just as important as the technology we're building because this, it, people, you know, the value of origin uh, is largely based on the community of people we have around it, the people who believe in this decentralized future and are willing to help us make it a reality. And so we're, we're built on Ethereum and IPFS, and we provide a lot of services around uh, identity, reputation, transactions. And all of this is completely 100% open source. It's truly peer-to-peer. -peer. And so you can transact directly with other members uh, on the platform without having to go through any centralized server uh, whatsoever. And so what we're building, we have a couple core components, uh, Origin.js and uh, the Origin DAP. So Origin.js, uh, like I said, is our JavaScript library. Interact with, um, with the Origin platform. And then the Origin DAP is, or a decentralized application, gives you that user interface for um, for creating and interacting with those listings. So you can do things like make a booking or um, view avail availability um, on some apartment that you want to book. Um, and you can check all of this out for yourself right now. Um, we're live on the Rinkbeak testnet. So if you go to demo.originprotocol.com, you can see a, a live working demo. And you can uh, use MetaMask and create listings and you can book listings yourself. So here's a quick video um, of that in action that you can see. Oops, let's see if we can get the video to play. All right, I can't seem to get the, the video to work here. Um, so I, well, I'll just talk through a little bit uh, of the demo. And again, I encourage you Go check it out for yourself on uh, demo.originprotocol.com and you can see exactly how this works. Um, you'll need to have MetaMask or some other Web3 enabled uh, wallet uh, in order to do this. So if you're on a mobile device, you can check this out uh, using something like Toshi or Trust Wallet or Cypher. Um, and if you're on desktop, you can install uh, the MetaMask extension in Chrome or use the Mist browser. And then again, you'll want to switch to the Rinkby network or the Robston network uh, in order to uh, check that out for yourself. From there, you can create a listing. So it'll ask you to enter the, the information, upload some pictures, and then you can, you can publish that to IPFS, which is a decentralized file system. Uh, and then we just take a big blob of JSON that, that describes your listing, store that on this peer-to-peer uh, distributed file system. And then we, um, because IPFS is content addressable, we can take that hash of that content and we can store that on uh, a smart contract that lives on the Ethereum network. And all of this is cryptographically signed so you can trust it from end to end. We're using a, a project called uh, uh, JSON Schema, which is a project from um, the Mozilla Foundation. Um, and that allows us to have validation rules baked into our JSON. So we can have rules about what is and isn't acceptable on that on our platform. And then our smart contracts enforce all the rules we need around what are the, the rules for um, what this uh, listing costs, what is the refund policy. Um, you can um, track all the different state changes of whether the uh, the seller has sent the item, and the buyer received it. We have features like escrow uh, as well. One of the big things that we've been focused on lately is identity. And so we're really proud of the work we've been doing around that and how we can uh, do identity on 
the blockchain. And so we've been working on um, this new thing called ERC-725, which is a proposal from Fabian from the Ethereum Foundation. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with blockchain, uh, you may recognize him as the creator of the ERC-20 uh, standard. He's also creator of Miss Browser and Web3.js. Um, and so he's got this new proposal uh, called ERC-725, which allows us to do identity on the blockchain. And what we can do is publish attestations. And so you can verify your identity and start hanging different bits of identifying information off of your Ethereum wallet. Um, so you can do things like verify your email address or your phone number and through a centralized server that you would, you trust. Um, and maybe in the future that would be um, some of the big brands and companies that, you, that you're used to trusting today. Um, and then they'll publish those attestations on the blockchain. And now you can start building up uh, a bit of that reputation and trust that, that other users need to have to feel comfortable uh, transacting with you. Um, directly. So um, we have ratings, reviews, identity. And the reason we're focusing so much on identity to start is that's really a foundation for so many of the other features and functionality that we want to uh, work on going forward. Things like insurance and arbitration, you really have to have that rock solid foundation of identity first in order to do those other features in a safe manner. So today we have about 40 partners that have already committed to building on top of the Origin platform. Um, SPIN and, and are working on a project called uh, PIN Protocol. They have, um, you know, here in San Francisco, we see their scooters all over the place, and it's, it's cool to uh, be working with them. Uh, Service Hero is a company out of Southeast Asia, some of you may know. Uh, they have hundreds of thousands of existing users and are porting their business over to the blockchain. So we have a, a wide range of companies, both existing marketplaces, which are porting to the blockchain, as well as new, um, new businesses uh, that are just getting started. A little bit about our team. I won't go into everyone here, um, but I'll say we've got, you know, on this slide, we've got four former Googlers. We have the, one of the six guys who created PayPal, was the founder of PayPal first engineer at YouTube, uh, head of engineering for Dropbox. Uh, and the on the community side, we have Andrew Hyde, who's the start, uh, founder of Startup Weekend, first employee at Techstars. And we have Kay, who's uh, leading uh, the charge on uh, finance and operations for us and the CPA. So just an absolutely stacked team. Uh, and, you know, we're, I'm really lucky to, to get to work with such incredible talent uh, every single day. Uh, we're backed by some amazing investors, including Hack VC, uh, and so really uh, grateful to have their support and, and to be a part of this event uh, today. And so we're, what we're looking for are, are really three things. If, we're, if you're a developer and interested in getting more involved, um, like I said, we're 100% open source project. Um, we have over 45 uh, contributors on the open source side. Um, we'd love to have you uh, jump in. It's a great way to um, learn a little bit more about blockchain and have your first experience interacting with, um, you know, a, de a decentralized team and, and on a getting up to speed and learning um, how all this new technology works. Uh, if you have a marketplace business uh, and are interested in building up a, a truly decentralized marketplace on our platform, you know, we'd love to talk to you. Uh, and of course, we're looking for strategic partners, um, investors, people who believe in this vision and want to be a part of it. Um, we'd love for you to come check out what we're doing at originprotocol.com uh, and get more involved. Uh, and so with that, I'm going to switch over and ask uh, for any questions you guys might have. Great. That's a great presentation, Josh. Really appreciate it. So we've got a few questions that have poured in since you started chatting, and let's go through them together. So the first question is from Sergio Goldstein, who asks, what about the processes to ensure the, that the participants are trustworthy? In a decentralized marketplace, who bears the risk of a fraudulent transaction? So I think the what we're seeing is is not that you uh, don't need uh, to have trust. The question is, where does that trust come from? Does it come from a centralized authority that gets to choose on a whim uh, what it is, or or can we enforce that through a set of open, fair, and transparent rules? And and, and that is our goal. 
Um, blockchain has, you know, what Bitcoin taught us was the importance of incentives. Incentives are um, the best way to predict an outcome. And so what we can do uh, is create processes and incentives to, to drive that behavior. And so what we're looking at is how do we do that in a more decentralized way? How do you have, um, if something needs to go to arbitration, how do we pick uh, a jury of people to arbitrate that um, and make sure that uh, you get taken care of? Great, thank you for that. And in the chat, uh, the, while you were speaking, what schooled by was a, a question from, uh, from Noah Shannon who asked, <clears throat> uh, in this decentralized world, who would maintain the Uber-like app in that environment? And how would that, how would that party be compensated? Yeah, so uh, again, it comes back to, to incentives and, and we need to uh, design a system that, that incentivizes everyone to, to be a part of it. Um, you know, we're building uh, a DAP ourselves, um, which you can use. Um, and you'll also be able to run your own DAP. Um, and we also envision a world where our partners are running their own DAPs as well. Uh, many of our partners are doing their own ICOs for raising uh, lots of marketing dollars themselves. And so their incentive is to get as many people using um, their DAP and, and, and their own uh, platform uh, as well. And we're just making it a lot easier for them to get up and start. So you can think of it as really as developer tools, creating these new protocols that other people can, can build on top of. Um, some of the existing business models Looks like we got a little bit of a video stutter there for Josh. Uh, I'll come back to him in just a second when his video reconnects. All right, that looks like Josh is back. Sorry, your video yeah. started there. Say yeah. that one more time, Josh, so we could fully get what you said. Uh, yeah. So the, the um, yeah. So so where did where did you lose me? Sorry. Uh, just the last sentence or two, maybe. So the. Um, but the incentive, it's all about how do we, you know, so our partners are built. Looks like Josh has had a little bit of, looks like you just disconnected again there just for a second there, Josh. So why don't we just move on to the next question since we uh, okay. we're, we're out of time. Uh, but, uh, but hopefully you got most of that answer from Josh. And Josh, maybe uh, toggle off your video okay. and just go to audio. And that might help to keep the bandwidth low on your end, and that way we can hear you. Okay. Uh, so I'll, I'll go ahead and, and just mute your your video, but keep your audio going so you can answer the questions. Is this, that sounds does that sound good? Again? Great. So the next question is from Sid. And Sid asks, what is the need for Origin as a protocol uh, when the things that you talk about in the white paper can be achieved using a DAO, a decentralized autonomous organization? So how, how does that differ from what you could build with Origin? So I, th I think DAOs are, are, are very interesting ideas uh, that we definitely want to explore. Um, a lot of this, a lot of this stuff is is still really new and untested, and so you know we we are we're very interested in how we can relinquish control to the community, and we really believe that we're building something that's too important and too meaningful for the world for any one entity or company or person to control and own. And so at the same time, we know that we need, you know, we need to be guardians of this technology. And we also know we're not going to get everything right in the first try. And so we have this sort of balancing act to do where in the beginning, we need to uh, create, create a lot of this technology and, and get it started. Um, but we're really wanting to create something that's bigger than ourselves. And, the, you know, we're, we're creating these tools to allow developers to create these marketplaces very, very easily. And if we're successful, we're going to absolutely change and revolutionize the way that people do business on the Internet. And, that, and that's why we're doing it. Um, we think the... Yeah, that, that's that's why we're that's why we're building this, and why this is why we. Yeah, 